Hi everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll build a modal, or we'll have a modal, but we'll control it with JavaScript. And not just a modal which we toggle, we'll learn different ways of opening and closing it, and we'll also do something in the modal, added some text which we then display outside of the modal, and all of that with vanilla JavaScript to learn something about vanilla JavaScript and also to learn how we can approach something like this or do something like this, which we often these days do with frameworks or third-party libraries, which might be better, I'm not saying that, but let's have a look at how that would work with vanilla JavaScript because you always need to know these basics. Now, I will actually start with a very simple starting project um, uh, HTML file. In that file here, I got a container, a div container with my modal control. There we have some text. This is the text which I want to edit through or in the modal at some point. A button which should open that modal. And then I got my modal up here. So this will be the modal we display in the end, the modal where I have a text area to edit this input later, and then a button to, well, cancel it or confirm the editing. And then I got my backdrop here behind the modal. Now we can't see that, we only see the modal control. By the way, all the styles are surprisingly handled in that style CSS file. Just some basic CSS. If you wanna learn more about CSS, if you wanna learn these basics, take our complete guide or dive into the other CSS resources. Links can be found in the video description. I'll not dive into it here. So let's close that and let's focus on the JavaScript code we'll need to write. The first step will be to use that button, that edit value button here, to open that modal, so to display this modal. The question therefore is, why is it not shown? Well, that's the one thing we'll dig into in the start CSS file. The modal right now is not shown because it has display non, and it's the same for the backdrop here at the bottom. It also has display non. So an approach to show that modal would be to simply switch that value from non to block. And for that, let's first of all add a JavaScript file here. I'll simply name it app.js. You can name it however you want. And let's make sure that this file gets imported. We want to import it here right uh, before that closing body tag. Now, I sometimes get the question, why do we import it there? Well, if we import it here, we're not blocking the, the rendering and the parsing of the HTML code because the browser will parse that file from top to bottom. And if we load the script last here, we ensure that the browser can parse and render all the other HTML code. Additionally, we ensure that when our script loads, the rest of the DOM will have been rendered, which allows us to interact with it from inside JavaScript. Now, there are other ways to handle this too, but this is a way that works really well and works across browsers. So let's add the script tag here, script source, and import the app.js file. And in that file, we need to do two things, basically. We need to register a click handler on that edit value button, which should open the modal. So we want to listen to clicks on that button. And when such a click occurs, we want to toggle the style of the backdrop and the modal uh, element here. So let's go to app.js. And in there, let's get access to that button we want to listen to. So to, whoops, to that edit value button here. Now, how can we do that? Well, there are actually multiple ways of doing that. Now, this button doesn't have an ID or anything by which we could identify it. And of course, we could assign such an ID, but we can also, of course, do it differently. We can simply get a reference to all our buttons and store uh, all these buttons in that buttons variable. We can do that by accessing our document. It's a built-in JavaScript object JavaScript gives us access to. This refers to the DOM, basically. And there we can use query selector all to get access to a couple of elements, all elements which match our selector. And the selector is a string we pass as an argument. And here I simply want to get access to all buttons. And with that, we have essentially an array of buttons stored in that variable. Now, by the way, if you're uh, already a bit of a more advanced JavaScript user, you could, of course, also turn this into a constant. This is next-gen JavaScript syntax. It's not supported in older browsers. You would need to compile your JavaScript code to older browser code with tools like Babel. Now, I will simply write uh, ES5 code, which will work in all browsers. But you could, of course, store that in a constant here, too. Now, I got that array of buttons. And now I want to register a click listener to the last button. 
I simply know that it's the last button. If you had a more complex project where you can't ensure that there won't be another button added in front of this at some point of time, you of course wanna select this differently. You wanna use an ID or a clearly defined class which only exists on this button, something like this. Or you'll use a framework or library like Vue or React or Angular to control this anyways. But that's not the topic of this video. So I will simply take my buttons and I know that the button to which I wanna uh, register the click listener is my third button. And therefore, since the index here starts at zero, it's that second, uh, well, the element with the index two, not the second element, but the element in that array with the index two, which will be the third element. And here I can then call add event listener to add an event listener for the click event like this. And then I define a function. And here again, you could use next gen syntax to use an arrow function, for example, but I'll use the old fashioned function here to define a function which will execute when this happens. So this is my function. It's an anonymous function, as you can tell, it doesn't have a name. It's defined in place where we then use it. And in that function, I now want to open my modal. Now for that, we also need to get access to that modal and the backdrop. And here we have classes by which we can select that. And we only use these classes once. So for our app here, it's safe to simply select them by that selector. So we'll have the modal document query selector now, not query selector all because I don't want to select all elements with the class. I know I will only have one. So I will simply use dot modal to select the first element which has that modal CSS class. And let's also select that uh, backdrop. So that uh, grayish area which is displayed behind the modal. We can do that with document query selector backdrop like that. Okay, so now we got access to these elements and in here on the click, I will now use my modal and there access the style uh, property, which is a property um, an HTML element has. And on that style property, I can then access the display property. And this accesses the CSS display style, and I can set it to a new value, and I want to set it to block here. And the same for the backdrop. Backdrop style gives me access to that style object, and there I'll set display to block. Now with that, let's save that and reload that page and click that button. And you should see that modal and the backdrop now. So this is now controlled through JavaScript. We can't close it. The buttons don't do anything. A click on the backdrop doesn't do anything. So that's the next step. And that's of course also something you can try on your own now. Try adding click listeners to the cancel and confirm button and the backdrop to close the modal on a click. Of course, I'll now also do it with you. It's essentially the same approach as we have it here. We have a button, uh, a click listener on that third button. Now the first two buttons should close the modal, but they'll then also do different things once we control the text. So let me add more listeners for the first button, for example, that will be the cancel button. I'll add a click listener, execute a function here. And in that function, I'll set my styles here of the modal and the backdrop back to none. So that's essentially what I want to do here. And I'll duplicate this. And for now, and that will later change. And for now, I'll do the same on that second button with the index one. Um, so that will be the confirm button. And I'll also do the same when we click the backdrop. Now this will not change later. So therefore, it makes sense to refactor this and add a new function, which we give a name, close modal maybe. And in there, I will execute this code. So let's put it in there. And then upon a click on the cancel button, I'll simply point at close modal. Now, important, don't add parentheses here because that would execute it immediately when this JavaScript file is first executed and therefore parsed. I don't want to execute it right at the start of the script. I want to execute it when this click event occurs. And for that, I'll simply pass a reference to this function without the parentheses to that click listener. And now this click listener or this click event will trigger this function to be executed. And I'll do the same for a click on the backdrop. So I'll register this next to it so that this is really clear. On the backdrop, I'll also add an event listener. 
And there, if we click it, I'll also execute close modal. Now down there on that confirm button, we could also write it in the same way, but as I said, we'll change this later. So we'll execute close modal in here. Now here we need parentheses because we're now inside of that anonymous function. And therefore this anonymous function is assigned as a reference to this click event. When it executes, we run that code in there and there we then wanna execute close modal. So that's why we need the parentheses in there. And with all that in place, if we now reload this one more time, I can close it with a click on the backdrop, I can close it with a click on the cancel button, and I can close it with a click on the confirm button. So this is now working. We're not controlling that value though. So let's see how we can do that. And for that, I'll first of all, control the value in JavaScript. I'll name it quote, and I'll grab my quote from HTML here, cut it out, and add it to app.js as a string here, as a value for quote. And the goal will be to load that quote into that paragraph where we output it here, and to also load it into that text area in the modal when we open the modal, so that we there can edit it and save the new value entered by the user in a new variable, which we then assign to that quote variable and update in all the places where we output it when the user confirms the choice. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, let's output that quote in that paragraph there. And to do that, we need to get access to the paragraph. Now for this app, this is the only paragraph on the page. Realistically, you would of course have multiple paragraphs on a page. So you would probably add some ID like quote or something like that, which makes the selection of this easier. Here we could have selected directly with the P tag, but I will use the ID. So let me get access to the output paragraph. And I do this with document query selector, selecting by ID with a hashtag and the ID I assigned was quote. And therefore, I'll set output paragraph text content equal to quote. This should ensure that when I reload here, I still see the text. Now let's load that text into the modal when we start editing it. So we need to get access to that text area in the modal. And since it is a text area in the modal, we can get access like this, text edit maybe as a variable name, that name, all these variable names are of course up to you. And there let's access document query selector. And now the query selector I can use here and you use normal CSS selectors here as an argument. So the selector I can use is in my modal, the text area. Now we only got one text area on the page. So I could have just used text area, but to be more specific and avoid clashes with potential other text areas we might have, I'll use this approach. So now we got that text edit field here. And I now want to change this when we open the modal, which happens here, don't forget. So in there, I'll set text edit value equal to quote. If we now save that and I reload and I click edit value, we see the quote in there. So that's working. If I change it, however, and I confirm, I close this, but I'm of course not using that changed value. And the reason for that is that we don't register the changes the user applies. So that will be the next task. We got our text added. Now we also need to do something when the user changes this. And for this, I'll set up a new listener and you can add it anywhere. I'll simply add it at the bottom here. Text edit, add an event listener. And we wanna listen to user input events. The input event is a built-in DOM event which fires whenever the user changes this value. So on every keystroke basically, not when the user types and leaves with the focus. Uh, the text area, but on every keystroke instead. So that is the event I want to listen to. And on every keystroke, I'll execute this function here. So this will run quite a lot. And in that function, I now want to update the value the user entered. I don't want to directly change the quote variable because I don't know if the user will confirm his choice. And even though updating the quote variable wouldn't instantly change the output paragraph, it would still change the value we start with when we open the modal because there we load the quote. So I don't want to edit this before we confirm our edit. So instead, I'll add a new variable, edited quote, and that will be an empty string uh, initially, let's say. And now when we open that modal, 
I'll also set the edited quote equal to the quote because that is the quote we now start with. But when the user types something or changes something, and that could also be that the user deleted everything, then I'll set edited quote equal to, and now we need to get access to the current value of that text area. So we can now use text edit value again. This is not just a property we can use to set the value, it's also something we can use to get the current value. So now we'll get the current value after the user did something, and then we'll store that new value in edited quote. This is the value we want to use when the user closes the button by clicking that confirm button, which is this button, remember? Now in there we could add some if check to check if edited quote, trim to remove excess white space at the beginning and end, length is greater than zero. If it's not greater, let's say we don't want to take that value, so it has to be a non-empty value, but that's optional. So we can add this check and if this is true, I'll set quote equal to edited quote and I'll update my output paragraph. So here I'll set output paragraph equal to quote again, uh, excuse me, output paragraph text content equal to quote again. So that essentially here is the same line I have up here of course. So therefore we can also refactor this, remove it from there and put it into a function, function I'll add here, update paragraph, and in there, I'll set my text content to the quote, and I just call that update paragraph when we first run our script, and then whenever I do wanna update it. So for example, here, when I know I changed something, I'll call update paragraph. With that, let's save that, and let's reload this one more time. If I load this and I click confirm, we keep the value. If I now replace that with an exclamation mark, we see that exclamation mark here too. And if I remove everything, it keeps the old value because that was now an empty input and we added this if check. If I just remove something like this, then it takes that value. So this is now working and now we're controlling this all with vanilla JavaScript. We now have a way of opening and closing the modal and of adding uh, that text to the text area, controlling it there, using the new value and outputting it in the paragraph. Now, there's one thing we're doing thus far though. We already created the entire modal here in the HTML code and we just toggle some CSS class to show or hide it. Now, this is not necessarily wrong, but you could of course also try to create this modal and the pr backdrop programmatically. So through JavaScript. That of course is way more work though, because that would mean that we remove our entire markup here and instead add a lot of JavaScript code to create it there. Let's still do that in the second part of this video.